for tapes, CDs, DVDs to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are many free audio files there. Thursday evening, June the 28th, 1979. Summer camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Wynn Worley is the speaker of the evening. Should this tape for any reason be defective, please explain and return for replacement. How many of you have never been in a mass deliverance service before? Anybody? Okay, a few. Most of you then are familiar with what we're going to do. Let me say for the benefit of those who have never been in one, it won't hurt you. Uh, People are a little apprehensive about that that they don't know about. And, uh, but a general deliverance service will not hurt anybody. Basically, it's what you would do if a person came to you seeking deliverance, believing they had problems. And what we do, we always do what we clear, uh, call clearing the underbrush, because there are areas that are like underbrush around the trees, and you'll never saw down the trees until you get the underbrush out. The, most, the first bunch of underbrush we go after is in the area of forgiveness. Jesus taught us to pray in the model prayer, forgive us our trespasses as or with the same measure that we forgive others. And you and I build up a lot of resentment and unforgiveness in our lifetimes because we have not been taught how to deal with this. And it's not optional, by the way, that you forgive people who hurt or disappoint you. And the right or wrong involved in the hurt is not, not important. I mean by that, we must forgive them even when they don't deserve forgiveness, especially when they don't forgive, deserve forgiveness. A lot of people, you know, you say, well, you know, it was really my fault, so I can forgive them for what they did. Uh, that's very generous of you. But, you know, uh, when it comes to forgiving somebody who does us hurt or causes us deep disappointment, and it isn't our fault, and it's mostly their fault or all their fault. We feel very justified in saying, well, I'm just not going to forgive them. And we talk to our friends and they say, I don't blame you. <laughs> so we feel very righteous about the whole thing. But until we come to the model prayer. And Jesus said we must forgive. It's not optional. It's absolutely essential that you forgive people who've hurt or disappointed you. Now, I want to show you how to forgive people tonight if you don't know how. And then from now on, be sure that you do it when people hurt or disappoint you. It's amazing how many people go through these services and then six months later I meet them and they, they've built up another stack of resentments because they didn't take care of those things as they happened. As long as we live on this earth, there are people who are going to hurt or disappoint us. Now, hurt and disappointment comes from those who are close to us. Those who are distant from us can seldom hurt us deeply and bounce us around a little bit. But the people who really hurt us are the ones that we're close to. Mothers and fathers hurt children. And you say, oh, well, you know, Mom and Dad, they're great people. You know, they didn't never hurt me. Now, that wasn't the way you always felt. When you were little, they hurt and disappointed you. And if you haven't dealt with those disappointments, then it's entirely possible you have a festering root of bitterness in you that will defile your whole experience. And you won't know where the problem is coming from. And you need to get rid of it, just like you need to get rid of a rotten tooth, because it will poison your whole system. Forgiveness is not optional. You must forgive those who have hurt or disappointed you in the past. Mothers and fathers disappoint children. Children disappoint the parents and cause deep hurt and disappointment. Husbands and wives hurt each other. Ex-husbands and ex-wives are experts at this sort of thing. And close friends, close relatives hurt and disappoint each other. Preachers hurt people. People hurt preachers. Teachers sometimes are good candidates for hurting people. But whatever the hurt or disappointment that has come to you as a result of somebody else's actions, words, or deeds, you must forgive them. You say, but they don't deserve forgiving. That may be very true. Let me ask you this. Did you deserve for Jesus to forgive you when he saved you? Have you ever deserved his forgiveness since then? Have you ever deserved his forgiveness a single day of your life since you were born again. And yet you and I have claimed that forgiveness, haven't we? I hope we have. First John 1 9. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we claim forgiveness we did not earn, right? 
As the little song said, he paid a debt he did not owe. He also forgives us of things we do not deserve forgiveness for. Do you ever analyze how many dumb and stupid things you do? It's easier to analyze somebody else's dumb and stupid things, but I mean, did you ever do yours? Huh? We really just stick our head in the lion's mouth a lot of times when the enemy is moving against us. And we need to learn to accept the fact that we are the recipients of undeserved forgiveness. Now, the Lord Jesus wants us to enter into the experience of that kind of grace whereby we extend that to somebody else. You say, that's hard. That's right. And that's why he wants you to do it. You and I need, because of the grace of God shown toward us, to be forgiving and loving toward those who have hurt and disappointed us. And if we're not willing to do that, then we're going to give roots for unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment to take in our old sin nature. By the way, that's where the demons operate. They operate in the old sin nature, and you are providing the kind of fertilizer they grow best in when you provide them with some fodder. I just hate her. I can't stand her. You old hussy took my husband. That old reprobate cheated us out of all our money. Hmm? You're going to have to forgive him. It's not worth what it's costing you. The luxury of holding that unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness in your heart is costing you so much it's not worth it at all, friend. Tell you something else. You're going to have to ask the Lord to bless them. You say, uh uh-uh. ah, whoa, back up. No, 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 wait. Now, I was going along with you pretty well till then, preacher, but forget it. That old hussy grabbed somebody else's husband since she got mine. She's still on the trail. That old man's still rooking everybody out of everything they've got. Hmm? But you see, what you, the problem is you don't know what God means by blessing. If a person is unsaved, what's the best blessing that God could give to them? Are you really so angry with them you don't want them to get saved? Oh, you say, well, that's different. You know, I hadn't thought about that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, bless what they're doing. No. When you ask God to bless somebody, you don't ask Him to bless what they're doing. The blessing they need is what He'll give them. You say, yeah, but the one I know of professes to know the Lord. How about them? What's the best blessing that an erring child of God can have to be brought back to the Lord? Are you so angry with them you don't want them to come back to the Lord? You say, well, no. The Lord, drag them over a few roots as you get them back, you know. (laughs) No, no, we're, we're, we're too ugly in our spirits yet to, to decide how it's done. Let's just leave it up to the Lord how he brings them to himself. I've had people, they got that gleam in their eye when I said that. They thought, yeah, that'd be good. Slam them around good. Scare the daylights out of them. And then bring them back to yourself. Well, you just see it written all over them. No, no. We just leave it to the Lord how he blesses them. Okay? That'd be better because uh, I know when I was teaching school, we always had rules in the classroom, you know. The first week, I told them I was the dragon. That was my nickname. That was because I ate children. <laughs> you all see those little sixth graders sit there with their eyes pop up and they go, hee, 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 hee. And I didn't laugh and they had little smile and just go. <laughs> I told them I was old, ugly, cranky, and mean. And it took me years to get that way. And that if they got me upset, I would just be absolutely impossible to live with, and they're going to have to live with me nine miserable months. <laughs> and if they got me upset enough, I'd have a nervous spell <laughs> right in the classroom. Now, they didn't know what that was, but they looked me over and they decided they didn't want me to have that, whatever it was. And I had beautiful order in my classroom. One time I was, I was uh, the principal came down to see us. We were in a school. We had rented, a, they'd rented a church basement for a class. They had an overflow class, and I was down there with some fourth and fifth graders. And So the principal came down to see how we were doing. He was sitting at my desk. We were talking. And so the kids were busy when he came in. But you know how kids will do. They got chirping around, and a couple of them got up moving around. They were talking, visiting, and having a good time. I didn't even look up. I said, I feel a nervous spell coming on, and I just... Went on talking to the principal, and boy, those boys jumped the desk and got in there, and all the books went up. <laughs> the principal, the friend, I didn't, I just kept on talking to the principal. That's all I said. I didn't even look up. I said, I feel a nervous spell coming on, and uh, and uh, he said, What in the world is a nervous spell? I said, Well, they don't know, but they don't want me to have one, whatever it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, we had a ball in school. Um, but the kids learn. God is trying to teach us to enter into the grace of forgiveness. One way he does this is to cause us to follow his example in forgiving those who have hurt and disappointed us. Now you say, yeah, well, that sounds real nice, but I don't want to. Okay, then you'll develop arthritis and our cancer eventually. Boy, it always gets quiet when I announce that. Those particular spirits are drawn to that kind of atmosphere where there's unforgiveness which results in bitterness and resentment. When those spirits grab hold of you, friend, you are setting yourself up for many hurtful things. It's not worth it, believe me. Anybody who comes to us with cancer or arthritis, the first thing we do is take them through forgiveness. And the first thing they tell us is, I don't have anything in my heart against anybody. And then we know for sure they do. Not that they're lying. They really believe they don't have anything in their heart. But you keep digging and you'll find, oh boy, a whole nest of hurt and disappointments. But I'll tell you, of course, in a place like this, people say, well, wait a minute. I know dear old sister so-and-so, she was the sweetest old Christian, just do anything for anybody. This dear old man loved everybody, would give you the shirt off his back, sweetest old Christian man. And you mean to tell me that cancer, that arthritis was rooted in that kind of thing? Well, of course. People who are kind and giving of themselves get hurt more than other people because they do things for unworthy and wicked people who turn around and hurt them. But because of the way that person usually is, the person who's doing the giving, they say, it's all right. I don't mind. But inside, they're hurt. And they don't know how to deal with it. And because they haven't been taught how to deal with it, it builds up and it lays the groundwork for the enemy to do a savage attack on them. I think that's sad. I think it's glorious to get to go and rip the covers off and show people how to get rid of this mess and how to keep it out of our lives. Don't give the enemy grounds to operate. Demons always have to have a ground to operate on. They have to have legal holes, legal grounds to operate on. They cannot just jump on you like a bunch of flies. That was a comfort to me when I found that out. Because when I first got into this, I thought, oh, my lands, we're surrounded by these millions of horrible things. And, and oh, my, what are we going to do, you know? Which ones are going to light on you next? What a blessing it is to know they can't just light on you at will. They do have to have a reason. Now, they'll try to make you think. They don't. But they do. There's got to be an open door somewhere. When you and I are hit by curses, there's a reason. I'm trying to find out more about curses so we can learn how to close those doors. Become impervious to the darts of the enemy. Then we'll be able to walk in more victory than we've had before. You and I need to close all the legal doors that have been opened. And a legal door to attack you is through unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. Now, other things other than cancer and arthritis can and will come. But those are two of the horrible ones that are almost sure to be there. What you have to do is actually forgive the person. Because it's an act of the will and not the emotion, it's not as hard to do as you think. Some people say, I will not forgive. That means I won't. Won't do it. Will not. So if you can will not to forgive, you can also will to forgive. It's a matter of making up your mind to do it. You don't have to consult the devil about it. Just do it. Did you ever do something you didn't want to do, but you just made up your mind you're going to do it anyhow? Because it was right and it was a thing to do? Did you know Christians need that kind of discipline in their lives? What a bunch of panty waste. We have to do only that which I feel like. But if you just do what you feel like, you're not going to do much. That's worthwhile. Did you know that? God wants some disciplined men and women who are willing to put themselves under discipline. Remember what Paul said? If we would judge ourselves... God would not need to judge us. Do you know enough to judge yourself in areas of your life? Well, certainly. And if you'll bring judgment on your own sins and present them to the Father and get them rectified, God won't have to come along and knock on your door. Now, if you have things in your heart against people, or you think you do, you say, well, I'm not sure. Well, if you're in doubt, go ahead and forgive them anyway. It won't hurt to forgive them. And then if you do have something against them, it'll cancel it out. And if you don't have, it's not going to hurt anything. That's one of the nice things about deliverance and renouncing things is if you don't have it, it's not going to hurt to renounce it. But it will hurt if you have it and you don't renounce it. Amen? If you want to take part in this, we're just going to go through a simple prayer. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes when we start. Not, you can pray standing on your head, swinging through the air on a trapeze or whatever. 
But the reason I ask people to bow their head and close their eyes is because we are, we are so nosy by nature that if we were praying and something moved out of the corner of our vision, we'd be distracted. So if we close our eyes, then we're going to concentrate on what we're doing. And that's the only reason I don't want you to think we have some kind of mysterious formula we're going through. It's just a very practical thing to concentrate our attention on what we're praying about. I don't want you to be interested in what other people are praying. You concentrate on what God is saying to you. And we're going to have a private session right now. This will be just as private as it can be. Because everybody will be attending their own business. And they won't be paying any attention to you. If you want to take part, you just follow with me. Father in heaven, I come to you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess to you. But in the past, I have not loved. But have held unforgiveness. Bitterness and resentment in my heart against certain people who have hurt or disappointed me. I recognize this as sin. I confess it to you as sin, Father. And I claim forgiveness in Jesus' name. Specifically, I do now forgive the following people who have hurt or disappointed me. All right, now I want you to mention their names quietly to the Lord, those who come to mind. And they will pop into your mind just like popcorn. You won't have to strain for them. The ones the Holy Spirit's concerned about will come to mind quickly. I forgive all these people that I can remember and I ask you to bless them. And I promise you, Father, that in the future, when people hurt or disappoint me, I will quickly forgive them. In Jesus' name, and to please and honor Him in my life. Now, as simple as that may seem, legally, this robs the demons of grounds to operate. And if you have deep hurt in your heart, and we are finding increasingly that deep hurt is one of the big handicaps to getting people free. Deep wounds in the spirit that have come as a result of traumatic mistreatment, psychological, physical, or emotional, at the hands of somebody else. And so this robs them of grounds. Now, if they're there, they won't come out yet. We'll get them right at the end. All right? There is another area that is vital for you and me to explore and understand as being deadly to our spiritual well-being. It's called the occult. Most of you are familiar with it to some ex uh, extent. Let me mention some common things in the occult. We're in an occult revolution, a revival, and it's on every hand. Let me say, although I'm not going to stop to give you scripture references, I would... Uh, you can look up everything I'm going to say and you'll find out it's backed up by Scripture. In the Bible, every single work of the occult carries the death penalty without exception. That's what God thinks of it. Now, he didn't... Uh, you, you just touch it and you could be killed. God wiped out cities he ordered men, women, children, babies, even animals slaughtered in cities that were ripe, were running over with witchcraft. The reason for that was that the infection from the demonic is so contagious, he wanted no source of infection for his people. If you study the children of Israel going into the land, wherever they were disobedient and passed over a group, Contrary to what God told them to do, those people became problems to them because they were constantly getting tangled up in their demonic worship services. The, the, the demonic was constantly flowing back. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live was God's command. Now, witchcraft of any kind, white, gray, or black, are all the same rotten, hellish thing. 
And they must be rooted out and ferreted out. And in Christian lives, there's no place for them whatsoever. But we need to realize they're teaching everybody. They're down into the junior high schools and even getting into the elementary schools with this stuff now. And they're teaching witchcraft. We had a young lady in our, in our church who regularly requested prayer in her high school. Her English teacher was playing rock music in the classroom and was teaching them witchcraft. This was in a public high school in Indiana. And it's going on, people. The kids are being subjected to this. They're, they're putting out the spells and potions and all of this kind of stuff and teaching them to play with this stuff. The Ouija board. Parker Brothers sells two to three million of those things every year. And that's nothing in the world but an old occult device. And every person that plays with this thing comes under occult suppression. And if you've got it in your home, you've got one in your closet. There's also a demon in every single rock album or tape that has been pressed. And you, if you want to see how many demons you've got, go to your record cabinet and count. You've got at least one for every record or tape you've got that's done by rock musicians. The whole thing is demonic. The whole scene is demonic. Now, I know some people don't like that. No, I knew that preacher was going to get ugly. That's right. Well, you ought to hear the spirits talk sometime. You ought to hear the spirit of Mick Jagger tell you what he thinks of Jesus. Hmm? I've talked with him, have you? Tell you another shocker. You ought to hear what some of these Christian rock artist spirits say about Jesus. Right. Down in Mississippi, we had a cleaning house. I didn't even know who they were. They had a list of 20 somebody brought in. I started down the list, and those things started popping up like popcorn. Christian rock artist. And I said, what do you think of Jesus? They cursed and swore and said, you know, Worley, but these fools don't know. Why did you come? We had them hoodwinked till you got here. We got the hood off, I'll tell you that. There was some album and tape breaking and smashing going on. Some people got free, thank God. <coughs> Be careful. The devil has infiltrated so much. We're going to have to walk cautiously. Okay, sorcery. And you know, sorcery, of course, comes from pharmacia, which is the drugs. It's the occult induced by drugs. Everybody who's in, been in the drug scene from grass on into the hard stuff. You've all been involved in sorcery. And sorcery, you know, drugs is instant insanity, instant demonic power over you. If you want to drop the hedges in your mind fast, do it with drugs. Alcohol will do the same thing, just takes a little longer. But with drugs, it's instant insanity. And if you've, if you've uh, popped a few pills, smoked some grass, you got them. Just like a dog's got fleas. They don't tell what all you picked up. You thought it didn't make much difference, but friend, every demon in the country that wanted to jump on could jump on when you opened all the gates. And drugs will do this for you. Automatic writing, handwriting analysis, fortune telling, you know, card laying, tarot, playing cards, you know, where they tell you fortune. Crystal ball, palm reader, tea leaves, whatever form it takes. It's all occult, and every bit of it has the death penalty on it from God. Astrology and horoscopes. Did you ever read them in the newspaper and laugh? Not funny. You better confess it is sin and draw, avoid that mess from here on. Signs of the zodiac in your house are loaded with their occult power. You better get rid of them. While you're at it, throw out your frogs and owls. You won't need those either. Uh, hypnosis, under any pretense of purpose, is strictly demonic. ESP. Levitation, you know, that's table tipping, lifting people with your fingers, all that neat, neat kind of thing that... Uh, goes on. It's all done by occult power. And when you're present, when this stuff is going on, you can come under occult subjection from this. A lot of the kids, you know, play this kind of levitation and seance. They play these games at their slumber parties and things. Very dangerous. Not funny. Clairvoyance. If you've gone to a seance, you got them. You lay yourself wide open. If you've attended Christian science meetings, you've probably got them too. Christian science, you know, that's grape nuts. Grape nuts are neither grapes nor nuts. Christian science is neither Christian nor scientific. Mary Baker 80's religion is nothing but an occult science, if you want to call it that. Same thing for Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses. All of those are occult religions. If you've dug, dug into those things, you're loaded with occult spirits from those powers. All right, curses, fetishes, charms, enchantments. You guys got any little crosses with a loop on top? You know, the Ankh? That's the fertility goddess of Egypt. It's a lust goddess. You wear that thing, 
you're opening yourself to spirits of lust to come at you. Anybody who knows what that means wonders why you're wearing it. Hmm? You say, I don't believe that. Look it up in Britannica and see what they say. A-N-K-H. Bianca. And then, of course, the little Italian horn means I trust the devil for my finances. That's the little wiggly horn. Cute little thing. It's what you're telling people. I'd be careful about the five-pointed star, you know. That's the old pentagram. If you don't know what that's used for, you better study and find out what witches do. Hexagram, star of David. Poor old David had nothing to do with that star, neither did Solomon. That's all a lie from the devil. Use a hexagram to make hexes. That's where we got the word. Tell you something else that's occult that's passed over a lot of times. That's the Freemasons. They're not free at all. They're bound. And they won't know they're bound until they try to get loose. And boy, when they pull loose and that noose comes up tight on their neck, then they'll suddenly realize they're tied. Everything in the Freemasons, their symbols and everything about their ritual, everything goes right back to the Babylonian mystery religion. You need to read Babylon's mystery religion and some other material that's available to make you knowledgeable. We don't need to just swallow a hook, line, and think of what everybody has said. We need to find out where these things are coming from. And they're purely from the devil. Edgar Casey, he was a witch, you know. Jean Dixon, she's a witch. If you studied their writings very much, chances are you got their spirits. There are spirits in those writings. And uh, Edgar, uh, Jean Dixon, some people say, well, I didn't know she was a witch. I thought she was a very religious woman. She is. You can be very religious and be a witch. Huh? If a snake crawled in bed with you, wrapped around you, looked into your eyes and said, uh, look to the east for wisdom, would you think that was God? Most of us say, no. Well, she, that's what she thought. It's in her biography. Uh, if you were a prophetess of the Lord, would you lay cards and construct, uh, construct, uh, uh, consult astrological prognostications? Uh, or would you gaze into a crystal ball to get your predictions so you could write for the newspapers? Your prophecies? She does. That's where she gets them. Isn't that neat? And look how many people are following the witch. And when you do that, you get the spirits that propel them. Any kind of Eastern religion, transcendental meditation. Oh, that's a good shortcut to insanity too. Transcendental meditation. Blank your mind. Become passive. Let the devil take over. You can do this with mantras. You can do it other ways. However you slice it, silver mind control, transcendental meditation under the gurus or whatever, all of it is the same rotten mess. It's designed to open your mind to mind control, which is one of the most difficult spirits to remove, and one of the most blighting things. Now, yoga. Yoga is a nice uh, thing. All the exercises are designed to open your body to demon, especially the lotus position opens you to lust spirits like you wouldn't believe. They're teaching this in PE classes and also in some natural childbirth classes. Be careful. If you want exercises, there's plenty of good ones, but don't do the yoga exercises. Because even the positions of the body open you up to demonic infestation. Don't ask me how they do it. I just know they do. We, I don't know how many dozens and dozens of demons we pulled out of people that came into them through yoga, through the positions. And the demons said... She didn't know. She thought if she didn't do the meditation, it wouldn't hurt. She just did the position. You say, well, it feels so comfortable. Well, of course. They have to give you something, dummy. And, you know, I mean, if it didn't relax you or give you some benefit, you wouldn't do it. A lot, be careful. The devil sugarcoats a lot of his pills. But he doesn't tell you what that bitter inside is all about. All right. Karate, of course, is purely demonic, as is Kung Fu, Chinese karate, Jiu-Jitsu, and all the martial arts. Will fill you with murder, violence, and lust. Those are three of the kingpins that are always found in karate. You say, are you sure? Oh, yes. Delivered several black belts. Got a nice souvenir from one karate chop from a Moody Bible Institute preacher. Well, it wasn't him. It was something inside him. Didn't like me too well. But it was healed on the spot. And so people praised Jesus and laughed at the devil. Well, praise the Lord. That's what we call getting battle scars, the first aid on the battlefield. Demonstrates the power of Jesus over anything the enemy can fling at you. You get nicked every once in a while if you're out in front lines. Nothing serious. All right. Of course, I Ching, Hare Krishna, Zen Buddhism, astral projection or Ekankar, reincarnation, psychic heredity, 
water witching. Why do you think they call it witching? Sure, it's done by demon power. Of course, Jezebel comes under the witchcraft business. All of these things and many more are in the occult realm. If you've been involved in any of these, you say, oh, but that was before I was saved. Well, hip, hip, hooray. You know something? God says that there's a curse to the third and fourth generation on those who come in contact with this stuff. You don't have to sleep in bed with somebody with smallpox to get the disease. All you have to do is touch the sheets. You say, where do you get that? Well, the Bible teaches very clearly there's only two sources of supernatural power and knowledge. One is the legitimate source. That's through the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, God the Son, God the Father. That's legitimate. Other sources are illegitimate. They're not empowered by God the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, or the Word of God then your source of power and information is illegitimate. And it comes from the other side. Satan has a supernatural power and knowledge dispensing station. And if you want to take a shortcut, and you don't want to fool around that old Bible, and you don't want to wait around with waiting on the Lord for an answer, if you want to push to a shortcut, I guarantee you there's another station broadcasting. And if you're that eager, you'll be so dumb you won't know the difference. When the signal comes through, you'll think it's God talking. You'll get an answer. It'll be supernatural. And of course, most people are so stupid, they think that anything supernatural is from God. Anything supernatural needs to be checked. Beloved, try the spirits to see if they be of God. You don't just swallow everything that comes along. That's what a fish does. Swallows everything that comes along and gets hooked. Hmm? Anybody got a hook in your jaw? You swallow everything the devil puts out without checking it. Now, God doesn't mind you checking. Did you know that? He's the one who said, come down and let us reason together. Everything God does will reason according to the Word of God. It won't reason according to human standards. It will reason according to the way that God thinks. That's why we need to get acquainted with how He thinks. Then we'll know how He's working. But if you turn to the occult, you're turning to another God. And He said, those who turn to other gods, I will curse to the third and fourth generation. That is dead serious. That's bad news. The minute you play with the Ouija board, you are under a curse from God. Your children are under a curse. Your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren automatically, boom, boom, boom. Not going to be instantly. When you went to the fortune teller, immediately you came under the curse of God. You say, oh, but, but I'm redeemed from the cross. A curse, that's right. You'll go to heaven. But you'll sure have one time down here. Unless you break out from under this. But isn't it wonderful that God, in spite of the fact we're so dumb and we get our cork pulled under so often, He's made a way for us to get free from even our foolish mistakes. Thank God. I'd hate to tell you that part and then just stop and say, okay, let's go home. Wouldn't that be awful? You'd go out and say, oh, I'm under a curse to the fourth generation. <laughs> oh, dear. You know. But there's good news. God has a way to get you out of that thing. The first step, of course, is to confess it as sin. Every contact with the occult is sin. You say, but I didn't know. Well, certainly the devil doesn't let most people know what they're getting into. He's smarter than we are. Hmm? Sometimes we're just stupid. Sometimes we're willful. Sometimes we're just ignorant. It doesn't matter how you got in contact. The contact is the important thing. And you can break it, first of all, by confessing it as sin. You say, but that was before I was saved. Doesn't make any difference. He didn't say, providing you're not saved, or providing you're saved and you touch it. He just said, curse to the third and fourth generation. Confess it as sin. That'll square it up with God. But you still got another factor involved, and that's Satan. He's a legal expert. That's all right. It's squared off with God. However, I still have access. They opened the door. It hasn't been closed. So what are we going to do? Slam the door in his face. We can do that. You're going to do it as a believer because you have authority, and I want to show you how to do it. It's good to slam it on his nose. Wham! Just let him know. Believers need to start exercising their authority from the Lord. Amen? All right. Now then, I want to lead you through another uh, prayer. And this time we're going to talk about the occult. And when you come to the place, we're going to come to a place where we're going to stop. And I want you to put in the things that you know of that you have contacted. Now you say, well, supposing I forget something. Well, if the Lord brings it back another time, you can... You'll know what to do with it. The Holy Spirit will bring up the, ma the major things that He wants to deal with tonight. It's amazing how well He takes care of this. I don't have to do it. You won't either. God will take care of it. All right. If you bow your heads, please. Father in heaven, 
I now confess all contact with the occult as sin of seeking from Satan the help that should only come from you. I now confess as sin the following occult contacts that I remember. Now, then you just mention to the Lord all those things you can remember that I named or that I didn't name. If you think it's in the occult realm, just include it. We're destroying legal grounds for the enemy to operate. I confess all these contacts as sin, Lord. And rejoice that you have forgiven me. I also confess any occult sins or idolatry which I cannot remember. I now repent and renounce all these sins of occultism idolatry and any oaths that I have made to any false gods and I claim your complete forgiveness. I renounce Satan and all his works. I hate all his demons. I count them as my enemies. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I'm closing any door that I may have opened to you. Through contact with the occult. Specifically, I close the door that might have been opened through contact with the following things. Now mention again the things you confessed to the Lord as sin a moment ago. Let's get them all lined up. I now close the door upon all occult practices. I renounce you, Satan, and all your host. I declare you to be my enemy. I want you out of my life completely. And I command all related spirits to leave me now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce Break and loose myself from all soul ties, from all demonic subjection to my mother, father, grandparents, or any other human beings, living or dead, who have ever in the past or are now dominating are controlling me in any way contrary to the will of God. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I also repent and ask you to forgive me if I am or have dominated or controlled anyone the wrong way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself and all my children from all psychic heredity, demonic holes, psychic powers, bondages, bonds of physical or mental illness, or curses. Upon me or my family line, as a result of sins, transgressions, iniquities, occult or psychic involvements of myself, my parents, 
or any of my ancestors, of my spouse, any and all ex-spouses, or their parents, or any of their ancestors. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now rebuke, break and loose myself, and all my children, from all evil curses, charms, vexes, hexes, spells, jinxes, psychic powers, bewitchments, witchcraft or sorcery, which have been put upon me, or my family line, from any person or persons, from any occult source, from any psychic source, and I command all connected and related spirits to leave me now. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. I come to you, Lord Jesus, as my deliverer. You know all my problems, all the things that bind, that torment, defile and harass me. I now refuse to accept anything from Satan. I loose myself from every dark spirit. From every evil influence, from every every satanic bondage, from every every spirit in me, me, which is not a spirit of God. God. And I command all such spirits to leave me now. I I confess that my body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Redeemed. Cleansed, cleansed, sanctified, sanctified justified, justified by the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no more place in me. No more power over me. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ I, believe I believe that you are the Son of God. You are the Messiah come in the flesh. To destroy the works of the devil. You died on the cross for my sins. And rose again from the dead. I now confess and repent all of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me. To cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe your blood cleanses me now from all sin. Thank you for redeeming me, me. cleansing me, me. justifying me, me. and sanctifying me me. by your precious blood. blood. Now we're ready to pull the net and see what we've got. We've been busy destroying legal foundations and grounds on which the enemy operates. This does not remove the spirits, however, it removes the grounds on which they operate and makes them subject to eviction. And that's what we're moving into now. The word demon means spirit. The word spirit means breath. And most demons will come in in and out through the breathing passages. If an ambulance goes through town, you take all the traffic off the street. So the ambulance won't have any problem getting down the street. So we're going to take all the traffic off the breathing passages. I'm going to ask you not to pray with your mouth for a season. Not in English, not in tongues. Because we don't realize how powerful prayer is sometimes. Even the name of Jesus can be powerful enough to knock the stuffing out of a demon if it hits him right over across there. The demon's trying to come up. We don't want anything to stop him. I want you to move on. I, want, I don't want you to stop praying. I just want you to stop praying with your mouth for a season. And I want you to move your prayers upstairs. All right? That'll be up out of the way. And then uh, we're going to breathe through the, I just ask you to breathe through your mouth. The word to cast out demons is ekbalo, which means to throw out, expel violently. 
And so from time to time, I'm going to ask you to breathe deeply three or four times. Now, please don't breathe over three or four deep breaths because if you do, you'll hyperventilate and get dizzy and think you're getting delivered and all you're doing is getting dizzy. And we're not looking for symptoms like that. We're looking for things to help. So I'd like you not to pray with your mouth for a time. Pray in your head. I don't want you to be passive. I want you to be agreeing with me. And when I come across these things, don't stop to say, oh, I don't have those. Just say, Lord, if I've got them, let them go. Because remember this, demons can come through the eyes, they can come through looking, they can come through the ears, through hearing, they can also come through participation in scent. You can also inherit them. So uh, don't say, I don't have any, you don't know. Uh, some people thought they didn't have some that reacted and really came as a surprise. They were really down there. So we just want to get rid of them, amen? We want to be clean. Amen. Be ye clean, you that bear the vessels of the Lord. And one of the clean up things that God is doing. He is using deliverance to scrub his people and get them ready for the power that he wants to pour out upon their lives. All right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take authority over Satan and I'm going to bind him over the whole congregation. And then I just want you to just breathe. That's all you'll have to do. And then from time to time, I'll say, take deep breaths and just let them go. And I'm going to call out whole families of demons. I'm going to call out very common demons as a whole. I've got a list here. And I won't be exhausted, but it'll, exhaustive, but it will be typical of demons that are in average people. And it'll be whole families of them. So, right now we're going to go to, we'll attack the enemy in the heavenly. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I come against you and I put you on notice that the blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than your hold on the people, that the resurrection victory of Jesus Christ has defeated you, and every demon in this building is subject to the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. And I come against you in that wonderful name, and I bind you and remind you that my authority is rooted in the third heaven, for I am seated in Christ, in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. This puts me high above you, high above kings, thrones, princes, dominions, powers, rulers of darkness. Every angelic hierarchy is underneath the third heaven. And I am coming against you from the power of the third heaven. And so your demons must obey. And I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon, every spirit that I name, if you're in the families I name, you must be obedient and you must leave the people who are willing for you to leave. And they want you to leave in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of laziness, self-hate, impatience, pride, irritation, ambition, loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide, death, Confusion, rejection, depression, misery, torment, torture, doubt, unbelief, greediness, guilt, shame, condemnation, an evil heart of unbelief. All the spirits I have named and all the families that are in that family come out now in Jesus' name. Every one of you. Breathe them out, people. Just let them go. Come out of there. Come out in the name of Jesus. Move. Move. Move out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Go out in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them. Come out. Every one of you I named, and if you're in one of the families I named, you come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Move. Move. Every spirit of the occult, the Ouija board, sorcery, witchcraft, witchcraft control, automatic writing, handwriting analysis, fortune telling, astrology, hor horoscopes, witchcraft, hypnosis, ESP, levitation, clairvoyance. Spirits of mediums, seances, charms, enchantments, curses, fetishes, Edgar Cayce, Jean Dixon, Eastern religion, meditation, yoga, karate, I Ching, Hare Krishna, Zen, astral projection, Ekankar, reincarnation, psychic heredity, mind control, rock music, water witching, Jezebel, the whole rotten mess of the occult. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Move. Breathe them out, people. Hard. Let them go. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus, move, move, move. Loose the people and let them go. You have no authority here, just move out. Come on out. Just keep moving. Keep moving out in Jesus' name. All spirits of fear, I come against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I break every curse of fear that may be on the people back to ten generations on both sides of their family that has bound them and opened them up to fear. Spirits of fear, the fear of giving and receiving love, the fear of death, the fear of pain, the fear of falling, fear of the dark, fear of dogs, cats, fear of crowds, fear of the loss of salvation, 
Fear of nightmares. The fear of demons. Come out. Come on out. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move. Move. Come on out of the people. All the fear spirits. Fears. Leave. Leave in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out by the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ has defeated you. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Move. Just breathe them out, people. Come on out. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move. Move. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. Move in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. All spirits of wrath, anger, temper, contention, fighting, murder, destruction, malice, envy, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, pride, hysteria, fits, convulsions, spirit of a broken heart, Wounded spirit, unforgiveness, schizophrenia, and paranoia. Come out of the people now in Jesus' name. Move. Move out in Jesus' name. Breathe hard, people, and let them go. Come out of them now in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, foul things. Come out of there. Loose the people in Jesus' name. What? No, you're not. Their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Him that defiles the temple, God will destroy. Every evil spirit is a defiling thing. So come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every spirit of profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation, lying, gossip, slander. I come against spirits of whining, complaining, self-pity, criticism, mockery, foolishness, ridicule, and perversity. Come out of the people now. All the spirits I've named and all the spirits in those families. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose some people and let them go. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Loose them. Let them go in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God's Son, loose them. Loose them and let them go. Spirits of addiction. I come against spirits of addiction. Addiction to food, gluttony. Addiction to nicotine, craving. And addiction to nicotine, alcohol, drugs, marijuana, acid, speed, diet pills, amphetamines, Valium, heroin, cocaine, tranquilizers, barbiturates, the uppers, the downers, all the drug family, the addiction, the craving, and the binding that comes with those addictions. Come out of the people now. Loose them and let them go. Breathe them out. Let them go. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Move in Jesus' name. Come out. All the spirits of addiction and craving, move in Jesus' name. Your power is broken in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. I come against spirits of lust. I break the curses of lust on the people back to ten generations on both sides of the family. And in the name of Jesus, every spirit of lust, masturbation, guilt, shame, condemnation, burning passions, homosexuality, adultery, fornication, immorality, all forms of sex perversion, oral sex, anal sex, incest, uncleanness, filth, sadism, masochism, frigidity, impotence, rape, Filthy conversation, filthy dreams, pornography, cruelty, incubi, succubi, lasciviousness, lewdness, nudity, all the spirits in the family of lust. Come out of the people now. Come out of them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Move. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus you are defeated, so leave. Leave in Jesus' name. Every spirit of infirmity, deformity, pain, arthritis, allergies of all kinds, hay fever and all kinds of respiratory problems, sinuses, sinus trouble, infections, cancer, tumor, ulcer, hemorrhoids, muscle spasms, drowning, asphyxiation, choking, smothering, fainting, suffering, swelling, cramps, fit, convulsions, epilepsy, heart failure, heart disease, heart attack. And fear of all these, psoriasis, eczema, acne, warts, hernia, blindness, and all kinds of eye trouble, paralysis, all kinds of trouble with the ears, glaucoma, cataract, deafness, all kinds of spirits of the bone breaker and the back breaker. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Move in Jesus' name. Spirit of accident. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. In the mighty name of Jesus, come out. Come out. All the way. Come on. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you are defeated. Come out. In Jesus' name. Now, this will not remove all of the demons, but it does do a lot of clearing the underbrush. Some of you have gotten some relief in some area. 
Some of you are still feeling uncomfortable. You may have some strange pains or some funny feelings somewhere in your body. Or you're not feeling well. By all means, don't leave without prayer. Because if the demons are manifesting and they're not dealt with tonight, then you could go home and you may not sleep tonight. So by all means, seek prayer before you leave. Get somebody to pray. If you do have to leave right away, let somebody know so they can pray and bind the things up. But if you want the things out and there's still some manifesting or stirring, some strange thing going on inside, by all means, seek help tonight. There are workers here who could help you. Let's stand. Perhaps we could sing something about that name because it's the name of Jesus that defeats the enemy and drives him out. And you come if you need further prayer. Something about that name. The name of Jesus is stronger far than anything the devil's got. Praise his name. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com. There are many free audio files there. Thank you.